everyone. Hope you guys are having a fantastic morning. I'm Carl and welcome to my desert plant diary. I thought I'll share with you guys my collection of aloes, halwerthias and gasterias since these guys seem to be in flower this time of the year, which is winter. Let's get started. I'm not sure of the names because uh, where I live, plants aren't sold with plant labels. So you pretty much buy the plant and you've got to do your research to figure out which type of plant you've got. If you do know the names nonetheless, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. I'd more than appreciate that. So let's get, get started with the first one over here. This is the Gasteria Armstrongii. As you can see, it's etiolated quite a bit, but the new growth, once I moved it to an area of sunlight, is pretty normal now and looks healthy as well. And behind that, I'm guessing, is a uh, Harworthia tessellata. Got that about two or three months ago. Seems to be adapting quite well now. This is a Harworthia truncata. Now, I, I got this plant when I travelled to the north of the country, um, towards the northeast of the country, I'm guessing, that's where that is. And um, those areas are pretty cold normally, so I think this guy's having some amount of trouble adapting. But as of now, it seems to be okay, and the, growth seems, um, the leaf seems to be pretty turgid. Behind that, we've got an aloe hawathioides. I'm guessing this is an aloe rawi eye, which is in bloom. However, pictures I've seen on the internet of some, sorry, not aloe rawia, aloe snowstorm. So some pictures I've seen on the internet seem to have or show some amount of teething. But this guy does not seem to have teething on the surface. Well, there is some teething actually, so check that before the video goes. <laughs> it's not pretty evident though. And behind that we've got an aloe jacunda showing some form of variegation. An unknown, I'm guessing, gaster aloe here. Aloe humulus. Got this about a couple of months ago actually, seems to be taking time to settle in. Now somebody had passed a comment stating that I need to dig up the soil surface every month. But I'm guessing that's going to disturb the root system, which you don't ideally want. I could be wrong. Uh, however, having said that, the soil that I use seems to be pretty grainy, and we'll talk about that in another video. So you don't need to dig it quite a bit. As you can see, it is pretty grainy, so yeah. We've got an aloe disconcii behind that, and that's in butt. An aloe Christmas carol that's in bloom. And the Christmas carol series seems to be one of my favorites. An aloe, either marmalade or lion face or sunrise. I've seen that labeled differently on different websites. Got some beautiful coloration on it. And that guy is in flower too. So this is the flower from that guy. And as you can see, it has quite a few seed pods there as well. I'm not sure of the name of this aloe. Another unknown aloe. Now, I thought that this was a Disconcii too, but obviously the morphology and the coloration on these two is very, very different. That one is a darker green. This guy seems to be lighter in color. Next up, we have some baby aloes. So when I bought an aloe from one of the sellers, these two came out with it while he tried to get um, the adult specimen out of the ground and so he asked me if I'd like it and I took it I thought I'll grow them and give them to a friend of mine who collects plants too now behind that we've got a gasteria bicolor and that's a lily patana we bought that about two or three weeks ago so uh, the gray coloring that you see over there is temporary because the plant is stressed it will become a darker green later next to that we've got an aloe jacunda and that's some flower and it's got very different looking flowers compared to the normal aloes as you can see the one um, in the foreground is darker um, red in color and this guy is a light peach color moving on we've got the aloe blush and that's in flower too and has uh, from the previous bloom spike you can see seed pods have formed so all of the seeds have managed to 
get dispersed and these are naturally pollinated. There's a bird that comes here, I'll put the video up um, perhaps in a couple of days, and he or she pollinates it naturally. Behind that we've got a Gasteria, I'm guessing it's a Pilantii, but I've seen that labelled as varicosa on the internet, so not too sure. Next to that we've got a Gasteria excelsa, and now this um, is a pretty large Gasteria. In fact, they say it grows um, to be quite big and perhaps is even the biggest of the Gasterias. Can't wait for that to become an adult. So we've got an Aloe Rawia over here. He seems to have adapted quite well and as you can see the stressed color is this, it's a, almost a brown color. And the new growth is, it's natural green uh, color with white speckling there. A Gasteria palancii. Over there we have an Aloe Blizzard. I've also seen this called the Delta Lights, so I'm not sure of the difference. And this guy was about this big when I first got him and the mama seems to have, seems to have grown quite big right now, as you can see. Need to repot that sometime soon. Over here we've got a Gaster, gaster Aloe. Haworthia Radula, I think it's a Haworthia Corn Color Radula. Gasteria gracilis fragilis variegata, and one of the pups over here is, well, completely variegated. Excited about that. An unknown Gasteria. I thought that this Gasteria was a uh, Gasteria frosty. Let me just get that guy out. The pup seems to have complete frosting over there, as you can see, but the, the parent plant does not have that kind of frosting, so I'm not sure of the name of this plant, but I like the leaf pattern on this. An aloe juviana, Gasteria pulchra, that guy, and over here you've got an aloe brevifolia. Seems to be stressed out quite a bit because it's getting that pink um, or blush like color on it. And one of my favorite aloes, I mean, I like all of them, an aloe aberescens. It's from what I've heard a mini tree aloe. Over here we have a Gasteria nigricans. Unknown Gasteria, I'm guessing this is a lathe, L E I T H. But you never know. And this is the one I think is a varicosa, but again, you never know. I get so confused with the varicosas. And the internet is flooded with images of plants incorrectly labeled at times. Let's move on to the others in the collection. Another one of my favorites. Aloe Blue Fang. Now, I went to a plant research center and... Um, collected quite a few specimens from them and so since I bought so many they gifted me this aloe. Well, the person in charge did not want to sell it but after speaking with the supervisor he was more than willing to give me a one of these guys. It was a pretty tiny guy in fact and he's massive now as you can see. That's, that's huge. And I like the coloration as well because the primary colors red, yellow and blue when put together, it gives a very nice look. So over here you've got the red with the blue. I mean that kind of contrast is priceless. And seed pods on that plant too. All naturally pollinated of course by one of the birds that visits here. I hope that bird never moves away from here. I must appreciate him or her for doing a fantastic job with pollinating all of the aloes and gasterias. So here we've got a I think this is an aloe royal highness and it must be a gaster aloe because the flower pattern of sorry the flower color coloration oh do excuse all of that dirt on my hands it's just metal with the soil so the flower seems to be um, the color of a gasteria but has the bell shape of an aloe so it must be a hybrid between those two then an aloe saponaria there 
Gasteria negricans. Now, this is an unknown Gasteria again, and the leaf pattern seems to be very spiral, spiraled out, which is interesting and makes it look really beautiful. There are quite a few cobwebs over there, but I normally let the cobwebs stay because uh, I'm sure those ditto pests. Allospinocissima, Spinocissima, and that's got some amount of variegation on it. Very mild though. An unknown alley that's in bud. Gasteria brachyphyla. Aloe spinocissima. The true aloe vera plant, also called a medicinal aloe. Now, there are a few aloes that are medicinal. Um, this is definitely one of them, but not all of them are medicinal. And this guy is variegated too. Unknown Alan getting getting that could be a triatula, but not sure. Aloe variegata called partridge aloe. I, I can't understand why they call this variegata because it isn't variegated, from what I understand. Looking at it, yeah, the partridge aloe perhaps because if you saw that in the bush, you might perhaps think that was the breast of a partridge bird. Um, Gasteria batiana. I thought this was the Dolomitica, which um, normally has, as you can see in this specimen, the leaf pattern is very distictuous, though it's beginning to change quite a bit. So it could be a regular aloe, sorry, Gasteria batiana, an aloe brandreensis, and that's in bud too, a Gasteria excelsa, pretty large specimen, though it's still a baby. Uh, compared to the parent plant, I got it off. And these grow up to be pretty large too, so yeah. Can't wait for that to happen. An unknown aloe over there again. So, um, I live in a state in the south of the country where we did have a bit of a challenge with water because there was water shortage because a lot of people had moved into the city. And so my mom started complaining about the use of water and so guys if you live in an area where you don't get a lot of water so uh, this and, and that's happening I think in a lot of places in the world even the US and I'm guessing Australia based on a video I saw too succulents are the way to go so if you need any information and if I have that information with me um, do feel free to communicate perhaps we could help um, each other keep the planet green so that's one of the reasons why I made these videos because I normally collected tropical plants and uh, the shortage of water kind of threatened me continuing with the garden so right now I think I have about just 20 or 30 of those tropical plants because most of them died during that uh, period of water shortage so yeah uh, even if you water these plants about once a week give it a good drench they will survive and thrive in fact more than just survive so yeah the, I think succulents are the way to go and we need to start getting as much information as we can about them you can't imagine a planet without plants so uh, I will make some more videos to share information on how you can grow cacti and succulents and let's work together in keeping this planet green so I hope you guys have a fantastic day thank you for tuning in feel free to like comment and subscribe. Cheers.